Okay, so in the last video, we showed proposition 2.6. It says if f from g to c is analytic, and suppose that we have the closed disk totally contained in G. So uh, G is open set. Normally we, we, we require G to be open. And A is an interior point. It means there's a neighborhood inside the G. And we shrink the, the, the radius a little bit. We can guarantee there is a small enough R so that the closed disk is inside the G. So this is not a uh, a strong condition, it's a natural condition. Okay, uh, when you have this closed disk, we include the boundary, the circle. So let gamma t be a plus r e i t. Here t belongs to 0 to pi. So gamma t is uh, the path, the closed circle. Then for any z minus a less than r, any point in the inside of the open disk, we have f of z is equal to 1 over 2 pi i, the integral f w over w minus z along gamma. Okay, so this is a statement. And be careful, inside this statement, this is constant. Well, I say constant means constant with respect to the integral. This one is a variable. After integration, W will disappear. So the right-hand side is just an uh, uh, expression of a Z. It matches the left-hand side, this. OK, so in this whole proof, if you, show, if you check that proof, you will see why we require the analyticity of F is because in that phi s t construction, remember that phi s t is equal to z plus e i s minus z times f e i s over e i s minus z and minus f z. Okay, so this phi s t should be continuously differentiable. The analyticity is used here to guarantee this condition is satisfied. So phi as t is continuously differentiable, then we can apply the previous lemma and uh, not Lab Lebanese rule. We, we apply the Lebanese rule to, to get the proof done. Okay? So this is, uh, is uh, one of a uh, important condition to apply the Lebanese rule. Okay, so after we get this proposition, this formula, or the evaluation of f of z, we want to expand f of z to a power series. To expand it to the power series, we're going to study this denominator, w minus z. And check here, z z minus a is less than r. In order to apply it, you have to require z minus a is less than r. What is w? w is on the, on the circle. So w minus a is equal to r. So z minus a over w minus a is less than 1. It's less than 1, right? So that's a, uh, the condition, the information you should keep in mind. And in order to expand something to the power series, basically you actually know how to add this power series. We have a perfect representation about this concrete evaluation that's a geometric series. Okay, so how do we apply the geometric series? We have the following strategy. We first subtract A from W and from Z. And then we factor out W minus A.
okay? So you first subtract A for W and for Z. You do not change anything. And then you factor the W minus A from the first position. Then you have a 1 over 1 minus Z minus A over W minus A. And by this condition, we know this uh, second factor is equal to sigma n from 0 to infinity, Z minus A over W minus A to nth power. Right? Because of this condition, we require this. Okay, so once, once we have this, let's, this is always correct. If the condition is satisfied, this is always correct. Now let's rewrite. Let us rewrite. Rewrite what? Rewrite f of z is equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral along gamma in this expression is f w over w minus a. This denominator, denominator becomes this uh, complex expression. Z minus a, w minus a to nth power, and dw, dw. Okay? So if you want to write it, it can be something like this. You put this sum, a constant, into it. So we will have sigma n from 0 to infinity, 1 over 2 pi i, f w, w minus a. Here is a to nth power times another one to the power n plus 1, and z minus a nth power and d double. I basically I want to keep this term separate and other terms as one as one term. Other factors, the product of other factors as one term. Okay? The reason is that this is a natural part of the power series. This looks like the uh, the coefficient. But still it's not this one is a re rewritten. It's correct. It's equivalent to the proposition 2.6. It's nothing new, but it's not a power series. Because you, you have a power series first, you get the value, and then you integrate. You still have one expression. So what we want, we want to exchange the sigma with integral. If we can do this exchange, then we will have fz equal to sigma something, and that is a power series. Okay, so can we do this? Can we do this exchange? Do we need additional condition? That is a lemma 2.7. The lemma 2.7. Okay, the lemma 2.7 is used to, to give us the, the condition about the interchangeability of a sigma and the integral. Okay, so what is 2.7? Let gamma be a rectifiable curve in C. Rectifiable curve in C. And suppose... So whenever you talk about this interchangeability, actually you're talking about the convergence. Suppose that capital F N and capital F are continuous functions on gamma, on the trace of gamma, and okay, that's that's a standard condition. Now let's see the, the important condition. If f is the uniform limit, this n means uh, this u means uniform, uniform limit of f n on on the trace of gamma. The convergence is not just pointwise convergence; it's uniform convergence. Then. Integral of f along gamma. First of all, it's a limit, so you can get, this is a, a the standard, def, uh, standard notation. Not a standard, it's an equivalence, so nothing change. And the important thing says you can exchange it. 
OK? The integral of f along gamma is equal to the limit uh, approaching infinity. The integral along gamma, epsilon. So basically, the, th the lemma 2.7 just says you can interchange the limit under the integral once you have the uniform limit, uniform limit. All right? So it is a general result. It's not just designed for the for this uh, argument, but it's naturally it's generally true for all the uniform limit. All right. So let's see the proof. See why do we have this uniform? I mean, how do we apply this uniform limit? Okay. So given epsilon greater than zero. Uh, it's a uniform limit, so there is an integer capital N such that for all N greater than or equal to capital N, we have F of uh, W, let's not use X or Z, F of W minus Fn of W, of value, less than epsilon. For all n greater than or equal to capital, for, uh, for all w belong to the trace of gamma. Well, for if you first prove this, then you just directly put epsilon, because I did prove before. I know eventually, at the final step, we will have a constant, so I divide the constant here. Then I will get epsilon at the final step. So for for epsilon, there is a capital N such that for N greater than or equal to capital N, FW minus FN of W, ops value less than epsilon over the total variation of a gamma for all W inside the trace of a gamma. Okay, now let's see the, the convergence. The integral of F along gamma minus integral of FN along gamma by the linearity of integral, it is equal to ops value of integral of f minus fn along gamma. And then we pass this ops value sign into the integral. Okay. And when n is sufficiently large, this difference will be less than epsilon over the total variation of a gamma. then this is a constant. You see here we need the, the uniform limit, uniform convergence. If it's not uniform convergence for this W, you need one N for the other W, you have different N, then, then you cannot pass it to, to, to this uh, place, okay? Okay, so this one, you move this constant forward, you get the integral of a gamma ops value of DW, that is exactly the total variation. It's epsilon. And then, then you see here, that's why we put this uh, denominator here. We just want to balance uh, the coefficient. Okay. For n greater than or equal to capital N. We use this condition. We require n should be sufficiently large. Okay, so we finish the proof of a lemma 2.7 then we know we can interchange the, uh, we, we will see if we can interchange the sigma and the integral. We just want to check if it, you have the uniform limit, okay? Theorem 2.8, let f be analytic. in an open disk centered at A with radius R. Then F of Z is equal to sigma N from zero to infinity, A sub N, Z minus A to nth power. For 
z minus a less than capital R, arbitrary point inside domain, where a sub n is 1 over n factorial, the nth derivative of f evaluated at a. Well, this expression does not come from this part. It comes from the theory, uh, power series. Power series theory. Okay, power series theory. And once we have a, a power series, we can talk about the radius convergence. And this series has radius of convergence greater than or equal to r, this r, this original, okay? So it will be uniformly convergence inside the whole disk, open disk. Okay, well, let's see the proof. Uh, this is open disk, open disk is just open disk. You have analytic function, you only have it is differentially, uh, continuously differentiable. There's no uniform continuity, there's no upper bound about modulus, right? Which we lose a lot. So in order to get something, we want to shrink our, our domain a little bit. Once you shrink a little bit, you will have a compact disk, uh, a closed disk. Closed disk is a uh, bounded closed disk. It is compact. It's much better. It has a lot of property about the continuous function. So we will choose a little r between zero and capital R so that the little closed disk is totally contained in the, the big open disk. That's obvious, right? Whenever you have a little r, it, you will have this property. And also this little r, the closed disk, you have the circle containing the domain. So let gamma t be a plus r e i t, t between zero and two pi, right? So by proposition, two point six by proposition two point six, we have f of z equal to one over two pi i, and integral f w over w minus z along gamma d w. And remember what we had, we already wrote it as integral along gamma sigma n from zero to infinity, one over two pi i, f w, w minus a, to the power n plus one, z minus a, dw. This is correct. Th here, there's nothing about the convergence. It's always correct. All right, so keep in mind, again, keep in mind, if we have a series, Z is a constant. Fix this Z, fix this Z. Okay, so let's check. This is a constant number. It doesn't affect the, uh, the uniform con uh, lim uh, convergence or not. So we check this. rest of the part. Okay, so we just check this piece. Check this piece, it, gamma, and W is on, on a circle, it's a compact set, right? So it's going to be less than or equal to, we choose the maximum value of ops value of uh, F, W. And W minus A, W minus A modulus is exactly R. and z minus a to power n. And let's rewrite it a little bit. Okay? 
again, z is a constant, then we know z minus a modulus is less than, so this is a number less than one, this is a constant. So it is a convergent geometric series, constant geometric series. So uh, let, let, let me clear um, where m is the supremum or the maximum of upside of fw. Okay. Then then we get the series. This series you see here it still depend on w. Is dominated by the constant. Why I say constant means constant in with respect to W by the constant geometric series. Whenever you have such condition, we can see that the series convergence uniform. Convergence uniform means that the limit is a uniform limit. Convergence, converge, uniform converge. Converges, sorry. Converges uniformly. Uniformly in terms of a W, not a Z, in terms of a W. Here you don't worry about a W. Okay, so we verify the condition or the, re uh, the, the requirement hypothesis in the lemma 2.7. So by 2.7, by lemma. 2.7, we have, we have what? We have this f of z. You can interchange the sigma and the integral. It's equal to sigma n from zero to infinity and one over two pi i integral f, integral along gamma f w, w minus a to power n plus one dw and times z minus a to the nth power. Okay, so this time z minus a to nth power is independent of a dw, so we move it outside. And if we call this as a sub n, we have this. So we do have a power series representation here. Oh, where a sub n is equal to this so 1 over 2 pi i integral along gamma f w w minus a to power n plus 1 dw it does not depend on z right but it depends on r so far so far it depends on r right so you still have this R. It's not a independent constant at this moment so far, which is. Okay, so once you have this power series, once you have this power series, power series theory tells us if Fz is is a convergent power series. Then a sub n is one over n factorial, the nth derivative of f evaluated at z. Right? And this, con this one does not, which does not depend 
on R. Right? So by this expression, it does not depend on R. So A sub N equals, even though it is defined by the gamma, by the, uh, the trace of the smaller disk. So this one does not depend on R, R. For whatever R, we always have this. Whenever R makes sense. How, oh, okay, so what is the requirement of R? Remember here, we have this condition. Also, we have another condition. If you get a Z, you should choose R big enough so that the open disk This is A. If you put a Z here, uh, this is Z. If you put a Z here, then R should be bigger enough and uh, smaller enough. It cannot be too small because uh, we need this whole disk to close the disk to contain this Z inside, not on the box. Okay, so these are uh, two conditions. But still, even with this condition, you have infinitely many choices about little r. So little r is not unique. There are infinitely many such little r. So we get the independence of the coefficient with respect to the, mm, the, 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 r, the radius r. Uh, Power series converges for z minus a ups value less than r. And r is less than capital R. So we are going to move this little r towards capital R. Let little r approach capital R. We have by this a, a limit a, pro a process, we do not change anything because this number is independent of R. So nothing changed. We have the, the radius convergence. This moment, this little r is the radius convergence. After we, move, we, we take the limit, the radius of a convergence, at least up here, we, we should put R, plus, R minus. It's a, it approaches R from the left side. So it can be insufficiently, uh, arbitrarily close to the little, uh, capital R. The little r can be arbitrarily close to the capital R. So we know that the radius convergence to be at least capital R. Okay, so we finish this, uh, uh, the interesting proof. The proof is application of a lemma of interchangeability of uh, integral and uh, sigma. And it is also the direct application, a direct application of uh, uh, the proposition 2.6. Also, you should realize that we have this power series writing. How do we rewrite this fw over w minus z to be the power series, right? There are three parts, at least uh, there are three parts of uh, of the proof. Okay, so we're done about the proof here. After we got the proof, let's see the several corollary. They are all interesting and important. Corollary one, the proof, the theorem 2.8, check here 2.8, we only mention the, the the domain of F over the <coughs> open disk, but not not every function has a domain open disk. So if F from G to C is analytic, and you have a point A inside the G, then F of Z is equal to the sigma n from zero to infinity, f sub a, a sub n, z minus a to nth power for 
v minus a less than r, where r is the distance between a and the boundary of g. So what does it mean? It means the following. Uh, you have a very irregular g. This is g. Uh, if you have a point a in the center, very in, in the central part, then you can choose a smaller disk, and you can expand it, expand this smaller disk, and eventually there's certain position you cannot expand it. That is the largest disk which you can draw so, so that this whole disk, open disk, is inside this uh, region. And this one is defined to be R, the distance between point A and the boundary. Okay, so you can draw the largest uh, possible disk, and then f when you apply the theorem 2.8, you just consider this open disk. If you get an even larger one, it will be outside the G, then F is undefined. If you have a point very close to the boundary, then of course you, your radius of convergence will be small because this is the largest possible radius convergence you can have, right? So this is what the lemma uh, corollary 2.11 says. You just find the biggest BAR so that it is inside the G, and this R must be the distance between A and the boundary of G. All right, so this is uh, uh, 2.11. And uh, next, 2.12. If F from G to C is analytic, then F is infinitely differentiable. Infinitely differentiable. How? Because analytic, you apply the, uh, the lemma 2.8, you will get a power series. And we know the power series is infinitely differentiable. And the differentiability is a local stuff. So it's always correct, right? Power series is infinitely differentiable. Then it implies F is infinitely differentiable. This is one of the uh, biggest difference between the real differentiability and the complex differentiability. Complex analytical function w must be infinitely differentiable. In the, in the calculus, you can never imagine that. Okay, uh, 2.13, 2.13 actually we, we mentioned this, just listed here. A sub n, what is A sub n? In the, in the interchangeability of a s uh, series and the integral, we get A sub n equal to F w over w minus A to the power n plus one dw. This is our integrability, uh, exchangeability of the integral and in the series. And from the power series, we know this is one of n factorial n's derivative of f evaluated at n. So solve this nth derivative of f at a, we get the nth derivative of f evaluated at a is equal to n factorial over 2 pi i integral along gamma f w over w minus a to the power of n plus 1 dw. We just, just, just move this denominator to the left hand side. And be careful, this is n factorial, this is not i. The bottom part is i, they are close but not the same. And of course, this gamma should be small enough. You just draw a small enough uh, circle, that's enough, okay? So we, we mentioned this before. Next. Cauchy estimate. 
we have this integral representation of n's derivative, we want to estimate its modulus. Okay, so let f be analytic. Because it's always just open disk, open disk, so we don't assume the general case. Even the general case, we will draw a small disk. So let's assume f to be analytic inside the open disk, and suppose that modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m for all z in BAR. If if you don't have such condition, you shrink this uh, closed uh, open disk a little bit, get a closed disk totally containing the open disk, then closed bounded disk will be a compact set. F will be automatically bounded, have a largest uh, bounded modulus. So this is a, a natural condition, not a strong requirement. We just give it a name, capital M. And then we have the estimation of the nth derivative of f evaluated at a. The modulus should be less than or equal to n factorial m over r to nth power. Right, okay, let's see how do we prove it. We have this. formula. This, this estimation directly comes from uh, this evaluation. Let's write it. Okay, so this is correct without modulus. Let's put modulus. N factorial, this is factorial, not i. i is bottom, so you, you drop the i, you will get, uh, i has modulus 1 n factorial over 2 pi. Then you move this uh, uh, modulus to the integral and then into the integral. Into the integral. Remember that A is a center, W is a point on the circle, so W minus A has modulus exactly R. Uh, here, 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 choose, yeah. If we want to apply it, we need a circle, but the circle cannot be the boundary, so we choose a little. Yeah, yeah, that's a let gamma t be a plus little r e i t, t between zero to pi. Yes, now there's something I missed. Okay, now we are apply that f of z modulus less than or equal to m. This is less than or equal to m. W minus a is r, so it's r to power n plus 1 dw. This is a constant. Move the constant forward, you will get the integral gamma modulus of dw. And this symbol is the arc length, the total variation of a gamma. Gamma is a circle, so it's equal to 2 pi r, 2 pi r. 2 pi, 2 pi canceled, r cancel one copy. So it's equal to n factorial over r to n and capital M, capital M, okay? So we have this. And be careful, this one is not the answer because in the answer we have capital R, but here we just have some R we choose. This R is arbitrary. Arbitrary means under this con uh, satisfying this condition. So let R approach capital R from left hand side. We will have modulus nth derivative of f evaluated at a less than or equal to n factorial m over capital R to nth power. 
right? So that's how the proof that Cauchy's estimate. We will use this. This is a very, very important estimate. We will use this one later. OK. Now let's try to connect this uh, analy analytic function to one of the uh, uh, result from the um, fundamental theorem calculus of TC. So 2.15, it's a proposition. says let f be analytic in the disk BAR and suppose that gamma is a closed rectifiable curve, close the rectifiable curve, starting point is the ending point in this BAR, okay, then, then we can get the integral of f along gamma is always zero. Well, well this, this, uh, this readout conclusion is very familiar, we saw this before. We get this this condition holds if f has a primitive. When we had this readout, we we have an additional requirement which we need f to be to have a primitive. Uh, remember that not all the continuous function will have primitive in the complex analysis. Not. In the real analysis, we know all the continuous function will have primitive, antiderivative. But in a complex analysis, not every function will have primitive. All right, very good. But here, this is true. We are going to actually show that if it is analytic in the open disk, then it must have a primitive. It must have primitive, OK? So we show that f has a primitive what is what is the uh, the proof so by by the theorem 2.8 we have f of z equal to sigma n from 0 to infinity a sub n z minus a to nth power power series representation for z minus a less than r every point inside this open disk and remember also remember the radius convergence is r the radius of convergence is r. All right, and now define capital F of z to be sigma n from 0 to infinity a sub n over n plus 1 z minus a to power n plus 1. How do I get this? I ju actually get the uh, term by term anti-differentiation integration. I will get this. And this one, we write it like z minus a, my bad. Z minus a, sigma n from 0 to infinity, a sub n, z n plus 1, z minus a to power n. Okay. Uh, by the Laptos rule, the limit n root of n plus 1 is equal to 1. Check the Laptos rule, you will get this. So this implies this new power series. also has the radius of convergence r. Also has the radius of convergence equal r because this uh, denominator will not affect 
this radius converges. Okay. Uh, this verification tells us capital F of Z is well defined in this open disk centered at A with radius capital F. We just want to confirm it's a good definition. It's not just a, a writing, a formal writing. It's a, a good definition. Okay, once we have a good definition, it's a power series. You can just easily verify capital F prime of Z is equal to little f of Z by the term by term differentiation, right? So capital F is a primitive, the theorem, the, the, the quarter is done, the proposition is done. The proposition is proved. All right, so we, we, we finish the proof of this. This is just a, we use the, the property of the power series. If, if we do not have such a thing, then we cannot overcome the term by term. Uh, we cannot uh, find this uh, construction of uh, F, capital F. Okay, so this part, we finish this section, the whole section. Now, the exercise it's on page 73. You will see exercise two, exercise three, and exercise seven. Okay, just just try some try this. Uh, Others are interesting, but let's just try those uh, three exercises. All right, so excellent. So uh, we don't finish this uh, lecture, and we will continue in the, in the next video. Okay, thank you very much.